Sim racing has got a big boost with the lockdown this year. With the second wave of lockdowns and with Black Friday and Christmas just around the corner, it's bound to have even more people interested in this hobby, for very good reasons. Sim racing is exciting, fun, competitive, it has so many offers, so many options, that will have something for everyone. Though, admittedly, it can be confusing due to the amount of available information, so today's video will be to tackle how to start sim racing. In this video, a few points will be covered, mainly what sim to race, where to race and what equipment to have. Hopefully this little guide can help a few people wet their feet into sim racing. This topic won't cover everything, so I ask some help from the community. If you have great tips to newcomers, leave those in the comment section as it may help someone. There are some cards above as well with helpful playlists. And I do believe that sim racing is for absolutely everyone, so the more help, the better. If you'd like to support the channel, consider leaving a like and a sub and use the affiliate links below. Before tackling the points, you'll have to ask yourself what's the objective you have with sim racing. Are you coming in to enjoy racing once in a while, or do you want to become as competitive as possible? One theme that will be central throughout this video will be save your money. Sim racing is far cheaper than all the videos out there with pretty things might give you an impression of. You should remember that sim racing is a journey, not a destination. Even if you don't have the most hardcore title or most hardcore equipment, it doesn't mean that you can't get it later whenever you can. First and foremost, have fun. There are many sims out there covering all the available platforms. Since all the platforms have nowadays a competitive racing title, if you want to get acquainted with the general gist of competitor racing, even if that's done on a casual way, it can be done on a platform that you already own. If you have a PlayStation 4 already, you don't need to move to a PC if you just want to know if sim racing is for you and what it's all about. If you are in a PlayStation 4, there are a few options. Some will cringe at the word Gran Turismo Sport with sim racing together, but don't hear them. That's not the point. GT Sport has all the bases for racing and has an amazing matchmaking system. Some of the titles will cover one or two classes only, like Formula 1 2020 and Assetto Corsa Competizione. Formula 1 2020 is extremely popular this way around. It's available in a console and in a PC. It has taken quite a large number of drivers. It's another title where some will yell against it, but that's fine. The racing is solid there and it's quite fun if you are into Formula 1. Assetto Corsa Competizione has been a favorite this year since the lockdown. In a good community, the racing is exceptional and the driving is the best in the class they use. If you like diversity, Assetto Corsa is always a popular choice, so is Project Cars 2 still, and I would recommend that you skip Project Cars 3 in reality. And you can also add the new Automobilista 2, but this one is a little bit more arcane, but it still has great car variety. The last sim I'm going to talk about is iRacing. This one is a little more complicated, as it's a sim that is hidden behind a very big paywall. Hell, even the content is hidden behind a paywall. But of all of the sims out there, it has the best multiplayer of it all. So it's not for everyone, but it's one to note and a lot of people play it. What sim to race can be as important as where to race. If you use your sim for just single player, pretty much all of the options that I've talked about including iRacing, have nowadays a AI that is competitive or even championship modes. However, the interest in regards to sim racing is largely where to race. Some titles like GT Sport, iRacing, Formula 1 2020 and maybe even Assetto Corsa Competizione have a self-contained ecosystem where it's not needed to get out of the game's user interface to find a race. That means you really don't need to get out of the game's browser or the competitive multiplayer matchmaking. But sometimes, league racing or special events are fun. Maybe sometimes what is needed is just a place to meet other people, to learn a little more about racecraft, ask for help and opinions, and this is where racing communities become super useful. By no means the communities I'm going to mention are the only ones. They are, however, some popular communities 
where you can learn how to race. Communities like Racing Club International, Actual Vision, SimGrid are places where you can learn, talk to other users and race. They race every week and they have every type of race in almost every sim. From championships with weekly races to special endurance races, all with excellent live coverage too. There's a little bit for everyone in these communities. If you are looking for something a little more personal, less serious, there are also other ways for community races, like uh, the ones available at YouTubers' discords. In this case, you can have a look at Jardier's or Chris Hayes' discord communities, or every so often, YouTubers like Team Ass or Gamer Muscle will be streaming large races with their community. Where to race is important, it will give you the proper idea if you would like actually to sim race. It's also a good way to measure the interest before committing yourself into getting into a hobby and spending a lot of money into equipment. Speaking of which, it's time to talk about what equipment to have. In which case, I would say what I have said before in the first episode of Budget Sim Racing. Spend as little as possible and, if possible, nothing at all. There's more detail in that video on the card above. If you have a gamepad already, most of the modern titles are somewhat decent with it. That's why racing titles like GT Sport and F1 become so popular. They are approachable and very decent with it. Always start with what is already available. Then, if the need or the want arises, consider how much you want to spend and how serious you want to take sim racing. There's no point in getting a full rig if you are not truly invested into it or getting into depth just because of sim racing. It doesn't make sense in my head. Nowadays, there are many options. There's cheaper wheels and equipment or even used equipment out there. Here are a few options that I can wholeheartedly recommend. First of all, the Logitech G29, which is very likely the last wheel you will ever need. It's a complete package that is able to fulfill the needs of most of us. And nowadays there's a G923, which is out. It's better, but wait until it gets cheaper. There are a few new things there, but the price, I don't think it's still there for what it's worth. Next, the always popular T300 RS. Now there's a GT version with better pedals. It's sitting at a higher price, but it's also worthy of watching. It provides more options with changing steering wheels, which will add to the versatility. If you want to race more GT cars, so you can have like a Formula One wheel on that steering wheel and have more buttons, which will be used for these GT cars. At a higher price, if you are feeling that you really want to get into sim racing, check out the Fanatec CSL. This wheel won't bring pedals, but the CSL pedal set is very nice, but uh, together they will command around 750 euros. But nonetheless, it is a great wheel. There's a lot more in sim racing than wheels and pedals, but I believe for starting, these are great options that I can personally recommend. And I've chosen these wheels out because of the price points and because they are possible to use on desks because they have the opportunity and a possibility to mount them on desks from the start. Because the desks are always around, most users won't require a wheel stand. They are recommended, but not necessary. Though, there are some options that I personally tried and I can recommend myself, which are the Wheelstand Pro and the GT Omega Wheel Stand. This last one can be even converted to a somewhat decent sim rig. Realistically, the price point to get into sim racing is around 150 to 300 euros on equipment alone. You'll have, of course, to get the software on the side. Generally, it's not very expensive and most of the titles that I'm talking about will be cheaper except for Automobilista 2 and iRacing because iRacing you'll have to pay monthly. But in regards of the equipment, this price, up to 200 euros or dollars, it is realistic but maybe it's now a little more during lockdown. With patience, nice deals can be had. A last point in regards to equipment is that it's nice to have, but it doesn't make one faster. Having a decent set of pedals and four seat back wheel is good enough. Of course, better equipment adds to immersion and it's nice to have, but it doesn't add to pace at all in my experience. Believe it or not, while having a better wheel is good, once you get used to what you have, it won't make a really big difference overall. 
you can be competitive with any of these options that I just given with many budget sim racers all around the world are still fast with these wheels. But most important of all is have fun. Sim racing is all about it. Guys, let me know what you thought about this video and what type of similar content you would like to see in the channel. If you want to see more of this content, make sure you press like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll see notifications when new videos and streams come out. Once again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.